Welcome to our studies in the Gospel of John. I'm Dick Baker, your teacher. We are already in John chapter 5, and in our last lesson, we dealt with uh, Jesus being at the Pool of Bethesda and the healing of the man that sat around the pool that was lame. And there was a confrontation already uh, starting between Jesus and the religious leaders, and that gets picked up in this lesson in uh, a little stronger way. And then, of course, when we get to the last one is some real issues that Jesus deals with, and there's some real anger uh, among the religious leaders. So we're glad to deal with seven proofs of Christ's deity, that he is God. We're going to see a lot of statements that Jesus says, I and the Father are one, basically. But let's look at the proofs as we go, and we've numbered them for you as we go through the verses. So number one up is service. We see that Jesus came to, to be a servant, and yet he was the Son of God in 16, 17, and 18. And therefore did the Jews. Now remember, we're just coming off of them finding out that he healed this man that is walking around the temple telling people that he has been healed. And, he's got, and obviously they could see that because he's walking. And therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. But Jesus answered them, My father works hitherto, and I work. And so hitherto, works hitherto in the Greek would read in our English or in the Greek, it would be much better. But Jesus answered them and said, My father never stops working, and I work. And so here is that equation. Here is that service uh, of the Lord that he, he's always with us. He's always the one that is working in, in our lives and for our best. Verse 18 finishes this little section. Therefore, the Jews sought the more to kill him. They're very angry now because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. Well, he didn't say anything that wasn't true. So three things to walk away from here. Jesus did not break the law for the Pharisees where there is nothing saying that you could not heal somebody uh, on the Sabbath day. They took a wider comment about the Sabbath to keep it holy, and they put, and then they put their interpretations to it and told them the people, this is what it means and what it says, and made them obey. The, t the traditions of the Pharisees were powerful, but they were people of power and anger-driven. And we see that in the Father. It also says that the Father is working on the Sabbath. Why in the world would Jesus be violating a commandment? All right, here's the will of the Father in one verse. Uh, then answered Jesus and said to them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the Father do. For what things soever he does, these also does the Son likewise. So the, Jesus is, some, is aligning himself under the Lord and being obedient to the Father. And he says as what the will of the Father is or what the Father wants to do, that becomes my will. And I line up with that. So our closing statements was what Jesus did was really never independent from God the Father. He didn't go freelancing anything. The works of Jesus were always in harmony or in unity with the will of God. Those, these are great examples for us as God's children that we take a look at these and say, how are we lining up with the will of the Father? Is the place that God's put us to serve and to work, uh, are we good servants? How's our service? And uh, are we in line with the Lord and God's will? Number three is some smarts here, intelligence. And for the Father loves the Son and shows him all things that himself does. And he will show him greater works than these that you may marvel. The, the all things are things that marvel, but just outright just intelligence. The word loves means never ceases loving. For the Father never ceases loving the Son. 
always has, always is, and always will be. So the love of the Father to the Son is one, and greater works are in the way. And this is going to blow them away because we come to number four, power. For as the Father raises up the dead and quickens them, makes them alive, even so the Son quickens, makes alive whom he will. Now he is making the statement and he is uh, denoting and just outright coming saying, I have the power to raise the dead. The Father does and there's going to be a great awakening and uh, some day of the dead, but I have the power to raise the dead right now. And so what he's saying once again, he is the harmony of God's work, or here's the harmony of God's work with the Son being shown. For the Father judges no man, but has committed all things unto the Son. So it's before the Son people will stand and be judged. Think of the believers. Jesus, Paul said in, in 2 Corinthians 4, we must all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. The rest says this, that all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honors not the Son, hears not the Father who has sent him. So we get a summary uh, in the statements right here that judgment has been given to the Son. Jesus has the authority. Jesus is the judge as God is the great judge. And think, think of God in the great white throne judgment. That's God the Father there. And as Jesus honored the Father, the Father honored the Son. Then we come to number six out of our seven. Uh, have you noticed that we've started just, we have come from a life of service that God, God is there to help us. God is there to direct us. Um, we, we seek to walk in the path of righteousness as we read the word of God. God reveals things to us through his word and through prayer. And then we, we move beyond that to seeing Jesus Christ as, as almighty God, that there is not anything that he can do. And so he is the judge. He is the raiser of the dead. Um, he is the giver of, of eternal life. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that hears my word. Okay, and the word hears my word means hears to understand and with the intent to obey. So he's saying, if you hear and understand what I say, and what do they need to understand and obey? and believes on him that sent me. There's one right there. You need to believe that God has sent the Son. You need to believe on him that he is Messiah. If you do that and believe every and believe on him in all aspects that he is, especially the forgiver of sins, we have eternal life through him. He gives that to us. And we shall not come into condemnation or judgment but we will be passed from, and but is passed from death into life. We will pass from death into eternal life when we die. That's an incredible promise. And that's incredible power because we did see the power of God. And so keep in mind, once again, I make this statement, and perhaps in a different word, from number one to number seven, this, this is a crescendo of the proof of who Jesus is starts very basic in which we can understand of service and then it just just augments from there it crescendos as if as in a musical composition and it gets bigger and louder and at fortes uh, let me first finish sorry uh, a couple more verses here verily verily i say unto you the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the son of god and they shall uh, they that hear shall live. For as the Father has life in himself, so has he given the Son to have life in himself. Talking about eternal life once again. So Jesus, Jesus tides the words that he has spoken to eternal life with the Father. 
Jesus talks about the resurrection, and it's coming soon. And he once again reminds us both the Father and the Son are eternal. They're one. And the last one is once again, but this is total power. He has the total power to execute judgment and has given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the Son of Man. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming, and at which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. And I say, Amen. This is incredible. And shall come forth, they that have done good under the resurrection of life, and that they have done evil under the resurrection of damnation. These two judgments are coming. And what it's talking about there, the resurrection of life are those that, that have come to know Christ and to believe him as Messiah. We've done good in making that decision. And then those that have done evil concerning Jesus Christ and they and other Christians, they, they've weighed the, just the promises that God has laid out, the will of God, and the will of God is not it, that no one should perish, but that all should come to redemption. And so in saying no to God, they've, they've, they're turning to evil. And their resurrection will be one unto a damnation. I can of my own self do nothing as I hear. I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. So our wrap-up with, with these seven things is Jesus has the authority to judge. There are two different judgments coming and the judgment of Jesus will be just, as will God the Father. It will be just. There will be justice served. So the, the most important question of all is, what have we done with Jesus Christ? Is he, is he more than a, a nice man and a good teacher and great stories? He needs to be, because he is the Son of God. We need to read about him, listen in this study, and we need to see Jesus for who he really is, the Son of God that was sent to earth to die on the cross for our sins. But before he goes to the cross, he tells us and points out exactly who he is and why he has come. So this gets more exciting, but there's, this becomes more perilous. Uh, as Jesus takes his disciples and teaches the, them these things and yet have, has these confrontations, with the religious leaders. So these, these are the folks that help me, and I want to encourage you to stay with this study. Um, and this is my YouTube channel. I invite you to go back and check out the playlist and see all the different studies that we have. Um, there's lots of other things to explore that are very interesting too. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for who you are, and we thank you that uh, we thank you for who Jesus is. And Lord, the example that he has given us just in those seven aspects and those short verses, that's enough to, to, to be saved. That's enough to know who Jesus is, that he is Messiah. That is enough to know that judgment's coming. It's, it's more than enough to know that as God's people, we need to be as servants as Jesus was. So Lord, help us and bless us in our walk and are living for you, and are looking for the hope of the return of Jesus. In his wonderful name I pray, amen. Thank you, and God bless you, and I'll see you on the next lesson.